I've always wanted children more than anyone I know. We met quite late, I was in my late 30s, and we were trying straight away. Did a round of IVF and it failed. One feels very guilty on behalf of one's partner. I used to look around in the street and see women with three, four, five children and think, what is wrong with me? I went to see my doctor and he said to me, your eggs are shot and you need to forget it or adopt or use donor eggs. And at that point, you know, donor eggs felt so sort of Jerry Springer to me. It wasn't something I knew anything about. So there was a sort of huge long drum roll after that where I tried around with my sister's eggs because I was sort of very hooked on the genetic thing. Shady Grove Fertility, this is Amanda Siegel. How can I help you? And I called Amanda at Shady Grove the night that my IVF failed and I was hysterical, besides myself, could barely string a sentence together. And she was so empathetic and so positive and so confident that I could have a child in a way that I'd never experienced before. You know, all of the injections and the tests and the flights and the choosing a donor and all of those steps are secondary to the mental leap of going, I want a child and I'm going to step up that fight. So I identify with the state of despair in which I see a lot of couples. And uh, I have a huge urge to reassure them that this is their darkest moment. And I also really applaud them for having the courage to come and find out more about donor egg treatment. The UK was very quickly ruled out uh, by us as an option. There are laws about anonymity that mean that somebody could rock up in 18 years time and say to my daughter, I'm your biological mother. Um, as a result of which, very few women want to donate their eggs and very few women want to receive eggs. Obviously, there's a booming business in Spain. You have absolutely no information at all about the donor. Also, I'm very, very pale skinned, so why set myself up with a darker skinned child than myself? Um, and finally, I have quite a few friends who've been to Spain and who tell me that there's a bit of a chaotic manana attitude there, which may be very charming in a tapas bar, but not necessarily when you are broken with fertility treatment. And the language barrier was of concern to me. I didn't want to be going through such an important, delicate process uh, when the nuance of what I was saying may not be, have correctly been understood. Once one gets to the point of donor IVF, one has been bruised and I certainly wanted pastoral care as well as clinical excellence. Dr. Levy encompassed both of those things for me and for hundreds of patients, both in the States and all over the world. Their statistics were extraordinary, if a little overwhelming. Very, very high success rates. They're very organized, they're very rigorous. My nurse in America often get back to me quicker than my nurse in Harley Street did. They offer a shared risk program, which means that once they accept you onto that program, they are essentially putting their money where their mouth is and they have faith in your ability to get pregnant and carry a child. And they go through that journey with you, including the financial risk. And I found that very reassuring. There are only two visits to the States required. Washington's a really great city to visit anyway. Yeah, it's a really overwhelming day, um, but a fantastic one, because it means that when you go back for your embryo transfer, you're not going into a strange place and meeting strange people across the other side of the world. Um, so we had an hour, I think, with Michael Levy, which was unheard of. You know, I'd never spent more than five or ten minutes with an IVF doctor in this country before that. Um, my husband gave a sperm sample. Uh, Dr. Levy does a dummy embryo transfer so that there are no kind of surprises with your anatomy when you have the actual one. And we had a meeting with people about money, so that was all very transparent. A look at the donor database and somebody sort of advising us through how one makes that very difficult choice. I wanted somebody educated to college level. I wanted someone who looked faintly like me. I looked into the eyes of my donor and I thought, I could be your friend. You look warm and kind. Well, it's sort of, ex I mean, I'm going to cry now, obviously. <laughs> it's extraordinary being a mum. I, I honestly never thought I would be. And even though she's 20 months old now, I still can't believe I have her. And I feel like I had quite a rich, fulfilled, happy life before. But looking back now, it feels like a life in black and white, and now it's in technicolour.